In this IGCSE CIE paper, we're going through a paper one biology paper from November 2017. So remember, this is the multiple choice paper. I'll be going through each question in turn, giving my reason as to why the answer is correct. So question one, which process releases water and energy? Well, to prove that it's aerobic respiration, let's just write the equation. So that's glucose. You do need to learn this off by heart, plus oxygen forms water, plus carbon dioxide, plus energy. And therefore, A is the answer. The dire wolf is an extinct species of wolf. What is the correct scientific name for this wolf? Well, remember, in order to name it, we need a genus, followed by the species name. The genus is always a capital letter to start with. A species name is always a lowercase letter. So obviously not this one, not this one. C. Canis dirus is the only one which obeys what I just said. So that is the correct answer. Which of the animals shown is a crustacean? Remember with a crustacean we have segmented body parts and usually a carapace which is a hard shell. That means this crab D is the crustacean. The diagram shows a type of plant cell. Where does this type of cell come from? Let's have a look at what it has in it. Notice crucially, there are no chloroplasts. So I'm thinking it's from part of a plant which is not exposed to light. So that would really indicate the root for A. So look for clues in the question. Which structures are found in a white blood cell? Cell membrane, yes. Cell wall, no, because it's an animal cell. Chloroplast, no, again, because it's an animal cell. Vacuole, no. Cytoplasm, yes. Nucleus, yes. Remember, it's red blood cells that don't have a nucleus. So having a look down the rows, which one matches up with my ticks and crosses? It's B. The diagram shows the structure of a plant cell. This cell is part of a tissue which, so it's a root hair cell. Absorbs carbon dioxide from the air. No, because that would be needed in photosynthesis, which we know the root hair cell does not carry out. Absorbs ions from the soil. Yes, it does do that because of this very large surface area of the root hair. Transports sucrose from leaves. No, it's not a phloem. Transports water and stems. No, it's not a xylem. So the answer here is B. Seven, a student made the following statements about the movement of ions by active transport. Remember, this is from low to high concentration and it requires energy. Remember that I like to make notes to help direct my answers so the correct answer effectively just plops out. It is the net movement of particles from low concentration to high concentration. Yes, that's true. It is the net movement of particles from an area of high concentration to low concentration. No, that's not true. It requires energy. Yes. It can only take place in living, respiring cells. For sure, this is true. So A is the answer here. 1, 3 and 4 are correct. Which diagram shows the appearance of a plant cell after it is placed in pure water? Well, we know that the plant cell will swell and become turgid. So looking for the swollen cell, it's clearly D. What is the colour change shown by Benedict's solution when heated with a reducing sugar? Learn this off by heart. It turns from blue to brick red in the presence of something like glucose, which is an example of a reducing sugar. B is the answer. Into which part of the alimentary canal is the enzyme that digests starch secreted? It's definitely not the esophagus, which is A. Definitely not the stomach, which is B, because remember that is where protease is made. C is the small intestine. Yes, I think that's the correct answer. D is definitely incorrect because that's the large intestine, which just absorbs water. So 10C is the answer. Which of these is digested by protease? Remember that digests proteins into amino acids. So we're looking for long chains of amino acids because remember that's what a protein is. Using the key, I can see it's the squares. We're digesting a large molecule, so that's why C is the answer as opposed to A. What must be increased in the diet of a person suffering from constipation? That's when you can't poo. So you need to have more fibre from fruits and vegetables, 12B. 
The diagram shows the human alimentary canal with string marked in metres beside it. How long is the small intestine? Oh, they want you to recognise then. The small intestine runs from here to here. So let's count the metres. One, two, three, four, five, six. B. A person has swollen bleeding gums and slow wound healing. This could be caused by lack of rich nutrient in the diet. This is very characteristic of scurvy, which is due to a lack of vitamin C. Which function is performed by the duodenum? That's effectively the small intestine again. Now, going through the answers, the simulation is building up large molecules from small molecules. That's not true. Digestion is breaking down large insoluble molecules to small soluble ones. That is true. Digestion is pooing, so no, that doesn't happen in the small intestine. Ingestion is eating, so again, that doesn't happen in the small intestine. Solid food enters the mouth at P and enters the esophagus at Q. How does the food at Q differ from the food at P? So I'm having a little scan down at the answers because it's a bit of an open-ended question. Okay, they kind of want us to work out what enzyme is secreted in the mouth. It's amylase, which remember digests starch into maltose. So therefore, when it's carried out its role, it means that at Q, there'll be less starch. 16D. What is the description of transpiration? So it's the loss of water from the leaves by the stomata. So it's definitely not A, exchange of gases between the leaf and the atmosphere. B, loss of water vapour from the leaves and stem of the plant. Yes, I just said that. Movement of water from the roots of the leaves. No. Movement of water through the cells of the leaf. No. Which words correctly complete the following two sentences? During transpiration, water moves from the something in a leaf and passes into something cells. It then leaves the surface of these cells by something and something out of the stomata. Okay, I'm going to start with three and four. I think that's easier. So it leaves the surface of the leaves by evaporation. And then because it's moving from an area of high concentration to low concentration, it diffuses out of the stomata. Notice there is no partially permeable membrane, which is why osmosis is not the right answer here. So those two are right. Let's check the first two options, xylem and mesophyll. Do they fit? Let's just pop them in. We can try and reread it out to see if it makes sense. During transpiration, water moves from the xylem, yes, that's true, in a leaf and passes into spongy mesophyll cells. Yep, that makes total sense. D is the answer. 19. The diagram shows a cross-section through a human blood vessel. What type of blood vessel does the diagram show? Okay, we have thick muscle and elastic fibre walls, a relatively narrow lumen, so I'm thinking that this is an artery. So A. The photomicrograph shows some blood cells. What is the function of cell P? Okay, this here. Okay, due to the lobe nucleus here, we know that this is a phagocyte, which means it ingests. These are red blood cells because there's so many of them. They have the characteristic biconcave dish shape. This therefore means that P is a lymphocyte, which produces antibodies. So it's quite straightforward, therefore, for me to pick out D as being the answer. What can be passed from one person to another person during blood transfusion? Cholera, no, that's dirty water. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, no, that's kind of the sort of thing that affects your lungs if you smoke. HIV, yeah, that's bloodborne. Scurvy, that's due to lack of vitamin C, so nothing to do with blood. The diagram shows some structures in the human thorax chest. From which part does most oxygen pass directly into the blood? You're looking here for the alveoli, which are the small grape-like structures, B. Remember that A is the trachea. We have branching here, which is the bronchi. Smaller branching here, which is the bronchioles. And C is the heart. In an experiment to investigate anaerobic respiration, that means respiration with no oxygen, two bottles are set up in a warm room as shown. What would happen to each balloon after one day? Okay, so we have... Sugar, yeast and water in the first one and then yeast and water in the second one. So the difference here is the sugar. So yeast is a fungus which feeds on the sugar. It carries out anaerobic respiration which produces carbon dioxide 
and ethanol. And it's that carbon dioxide, the gas, which causes the balloon to puff up like this because there's no sugar in Q, it'll stay floppy. So which one matches my drawing? A. The diagram represents the exchange of gases during breathing and during respiration in the body. What is represented by X and Y? Okay, this is quite an interesting little diagram. So at X, oxygen is moving into it and carbon dioxide is leaving it. The oxygen that's taken in is then transferred to the blood and carbon dioxide in the blood is transferred to the organ before being removed. So I'm thinking that they're lungs. And then at Y, we know that the body cells require oxygen in the blood and we know that they'll release carbon dioxide back into the blood. I don't really like this question, but it's lungs followed by body cells B. What is the most important function of sweating? Well, it's to cool the body, so it means to remove excess heat from the body. A. A student begins to lose control of her bicycle while travelling down a hill at speed. The concentration of which substance will begin to increase rapidly in her blood? Well, because she's super nervous, because she's losing control, what happens is adrenaline will be released, which is A. Insulin obviously lowers blood sugar levels. Oestrogen is responsible for building up the lining of the uterus and testosterone is responsible for secondary sexual characteristics in men. So none of those are linked to her losing control of her bike. What shows the order in which these structures are involved in a reflex action? Okay, so we need to receive the stimulus via the receptor. It then passes along the sensory neuron to the relay neuron, which is characteristics of a reflex action to the motor neuron and then finally we end in the effector so the only one that makes sense here is c the diagram shows a person sweating in hot weather what part is played by sweat glands during the process of sweating okay the sweat glands bring about the response which is sweating so they are therefore effectors they bring about the effect which row states the possible harmful effects of tobacco smoke cancer is true liver damage not so true that's more indicative of drinking excess alcohol, coronary heart disease, yes, smoking is very strongly linked with CHD. So the answer here is B. Which method of birth control works by preventing an egg from being released? Okay, condom is just a barrier method and stops sperm reaching the egg. The contraceptive pill, yes, that actually works by preventing an egg from being released. It depends what combination of hormones we're talking about, but sure. Monitoring body temperature, that just tells you when you're most likely to be fertile. A vasectomy is when the sperm ducts are cut, so again prevents sperm reaching the egg. So the answer here is B. Which environmental factor is not always a requirement for seed germination? Remember the mnemonic WOW, so warmth, oxygen and water is what's needed for germination. So which of those are mentioned here? Well here they are, so that means light is the exception, which is why A is the answer. The diagram shows half a flower. After pollination, where would the pollen grains be found? Okay, so they land on the stigma and they move down the style, so that's P and Q. A. A pure breeding white rat was crossed with a pure breeding black rat and all their offspring were black, so black is dominant. One of the offspring was bred with a pure breeding white rat. What is the most likely percentage of black rats in the offspring? Okay, let's pick some letters. I'm going to pick R. So I know that white is recessive. So the initial rat, because it was pure breeding, is going to be smaller, smaller. The pure breeding black rat is going to be bigger, bigger. And so just to do a quick crossover here, it means that all offspring must have been bigger, littler. So that's this offspring over here. One of the offspring, bigger, littler, was bred with a pure breeding white rat. So again, RR. So now we're ready to do the final cross, which will answer our question. So let's do a Punnett square over here. So both of these offspring here will be black. These ones will be white. So as a percentage, how many are white? Well, 50%. A tall pea plant is crossed with a short pea plant. All the offspring plants are tall. What are the genotypes of the tall parent plant and the offspring? Okay, let's pick T. Now, because all the offspring are tall, it tells me that that tall pea plant must have been pure, so it must have been big T, big T. It was homozygous. The short pea plant is recessive, so by definition, it must be small T, small T. So what are the genotypes? So what are the genotypes of the tall 
parent plant and the offspring, while the offspring are simply big T, small t. So going back, the tall pea plant is homozygous because both of those alleles are the same. So we're looking along these rows. The offspring are heterozygous because the alleles are different. So that means it's 34C. What is a mutation? It's a spontaneous change in the DNA or genes of an organism, so that's B. Which two processes both result in increased water vapour in the atmosphere? Condensation is when a gas turns back into a liquid. Precipitation is effectively rain. Transpiration is evaporation of water from the surface of a leaf. So that adds water to the atmosphere. Evaporation is again adding water to the atmosphere. So actually the answer here is C. The diagram shows a food web. What do the arrows represent? Remember that in food webs, the arrows show the transfer of energy. So that is why C is the answer. The diagram shows part of a food web. What is most likely to increase the size of the frog population? Okay, well, the frogs eat worms. So obviously if the worms increase in number, there'll be more food for the frogs. Equally, the frog numbers will be decreased due to them being fed upon by snakes and badgers. Lastly, what else is affecting the frogs? Well, it's slug numbers. So if slug numbers increase, then there'd be more food for the frogs. Okay, so now we're ready to start answering the question. So what is most likely to increase the size of the frog population? Fewer hedgehogs. Now, if there are fewer hedgehogs, then it means that they won't be eating as many worms, which means there's more worms available for the frogs. So that could potentially be the right answer. Fewer slugs. No, they want more slugs. They want to eat more slugs, so no. More badgers. No, I've said, according to my arrow, we need fewer badgers because, remember, they feed on the frogs. More blackbirds. Well, more blackbirds would just be eating more of the worms and meaning that there was less food for the frogs. So actually, I'm happy that my question marked fewer hedgehog answers is correct. The diagram shows a bacterial cell that will be used to produce human insulin. What is inserted into GAPQ? Well, that would be the gene from the human that is healthy. A. The table shows the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in three different years. So as time goes on, carbon dioxide has increased. What is the most likely cause of this change? Destruction of rainforests, for sure. That will add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Increased use of fertilizers containing nitrogen. No, that doesn't directly link to carbon dioxide. Nor does pollution of air by sulfur dioxide. Rise in sea level, no. So the answer here is A.